is this a good test card? Or is this a good test card? If you don't know, come along and I'll teach you how to read these things. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to re-enter the laser realm. Now, I see a lot of people, especially when they're new to the game, they're trying to figure settings out, power speed, etc. and everybody tells them, you need to do a test card, you need to do a test card. So they find a test card, they download a test card, they cut the test card, but then they don't know what to do with the information. So today I wanna to make sure that you know how to uh, properly create a test card, and run it on the machine, and then most importantly, what to do with the information. I mean, how do we read these things anyway? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna spend a little bit of time in Lightburn, we're gonna go out to the laser and we're gonna cut these test cards, and then we're gonna come back and we're going to read them so that you know what to do with all this information. Come along. The first thing we need to do is take a look at a test card. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of different test cards here, and we're gonna go over uh, how they vary and how they're set up. In order for you to properly uh, analyze and come up with settings that are going to work for you with a particular material, um, one, you need to test it because every material is going to be different. Even some you know, brands of wood that you get from the same manufacturer, over time uh, it can change. So if things aren't working the way that you used to, you know, things aren't cutting the same they used to, could be your laser, could be that the wood has changed. So. What we have here is a very simple test card. You'll find these all over the internet if you're in the uh, you know various Facebook forums, etc. Or if you just do a search on Google for Lightburn test cards, I'm sure you can find plenty of files. But anyway, let me go over how this is set up. So this one up here in this corner where my mouse is, you can see it's uh, uh, 0.125 inches or 3 millimeters. So this is designed for a 3 millimeter test card. Now, there's nothing specific to this card other than the way that it's set up via power and speed that makes it, you know, just for three millimeters. You could do this on a two millimeter piece of wood or a six millimeter piece of wood, but you're gonna get different results. Now, the way that this is laid out is we have speed up here, so 10 millimeters per second up to 30, and then we have our power levels over here on the left. So starting over here on the top at 20, and then it's increasing by 5%. So this card is gonna go from 20 to 40%. So this red circle right here, if we follow the grid, we would expect it to the speed to be 30 millimeters per second and the power to be 20 millimeters per second. Now, if we look over here on line two, and what I'm gonna do really quick, just to make this a little uh, easier to follow along, I'm going to ungroup this. Now that I have it ungrouped, if I just select this red, I can see that it is associated with layer 02 over here. And it, again, we see, or we can verify, that this is set speed of 30, power is 20. Uh, its output is set, it's uh, currently shown, and we have the air assist will be on for this cut. So as you go through, as, if we look at the next one, 25 millimeters per second, 20% 20 per, 20 power, right? So on and on and on. So you have to understand how these cards are set up because if you just load this in and hit go and then you don't know, you know, you don't know exactly what it is or I have seen test cards that are actually bad um, where this, you know, the, the row and column values don't match um, what is over here in the settings. And then of course you're not going to be able to read this. So we're going to take, um, we're going to take a look at some different test cards here. We're going to go out to the laser, we're going to cut some test cards, and then we're going to look in and discuss how you actually read the test card. So let me just uh, regroup all of this before um, I move on, and we'll proceed. Next we'll look at a different test card. Now I still have the 3 millimeter test card up here, because I want to point out again we went from 10 millimeters per second up to 30, and from 20% power up to 40. Now, if we look at a six millimeter test card, what we're going to see is slower speeds, higher power. Now this one does start at a lower power, so it's going in 10% increments, but we're going from five millimeters per second, 7.5, 10, 12.5, and 15. So you can see where the other one, we had a 20, uh, a full from 
10 all the way up to 30 millimeters per second gap that we were looking at, or a range, I should say. This one is only 10 millimeters per second on the range on speed. And then our power, we're going from 15 all the way up to 55. So again, this first circle in red here, we're at 15 millimeters per second and 15% power, all the way down to um, 5 millimeters per second at 55% uh, power, which is what we see down here on line 26. Now, if you want to know how long this is going to take to cut out, um, you can look at the preview here. So we go up to this little monitor icon, and it shows me right here. Now, this is a rough estimate because this the machine I'm on is not currently connected to my laser. Um, so it can't read the machine settings. So again, this is an estimate, but it's showing 6 minutes and 55 seconds. And another thing you want to do is look at the way that this is going to cut or engrave. So we can see first it's going to put in our shapes, then it's going to do our letters uh, or our text, then it's going to start doing the circles. The last thing it's going to do is actually cut out the test card. Now that is based on the settings in Lipern, so it's doing this by the order of the layers. Uh, if your test card cuts out before it does anything else, well, depending on how you have your material set up, you know, if you have this on risers or something, uh, your test card's going to fall and it's going to go out of focus before you even start cutting. Um, so again, you have to pay attention to that. Now let me talk about why those test cards that I showed you before are not the best test cards out there. Um, this is one that I just created today. There's nothing essentially uh, or exceptionally special about it. However, it, as you can see here, we're not using circles. Um, circles are not the best indicator for how your laser is going to perform, unless, of course, all you do with your laser is cut out circles. Uh, when you're cutting a circle, the laser is going to start, um, you know, the, the laser head is going to get in position, and then it's going to turn on, and it's going to start, and it's, pretty, it's a pretty constant speed all the way until it turns off again. Um, but most of the time we're cutting out either organic shapes, letters, you know, whatever. Um, when your laser is making these straight lines and has to change directions, it gets up to a speed, it stops, it changes direction, so, or it has to reverse direction. These all vary speed. And as you've probably experienced, sometimes you will cut something out and you've got those little spots where it didn't all the way, you know, didn't cut all the way through. So something with a, a little more challenging like these stars is going to give you a better sense because you don't want to pick, and again we'll cover this when we're reading our test cards, you don't want to pick a speed and power based on your test card circle and you go and you try and cut something out and you end up with a bunch of areas where it didn't cut all the way through because lo and behold you weren't just cutting out circles. So this uh, card which I will make available, I will put a link to a uh, file uh, down below in the comments uh, will be available for you and I've also added the material section up here so you can write you can type if you want in here um, what it is that you're uh, doing the test card for you can simply take a marker or a pencil and write it when you when you've cut this but now that we have this uh, set um, we're gonna go out to the laser and uh, cut this card before we send the job to the machine couple things I wanted to uh, hit real quick. So the first is I highly recommend that you do a power line um, test and what that's going to do is let you know exactly how your machine functions. Just because you say you know 10% power on light burn that's going to send um, something to your to your machine and you need to know how the power supply, how much energy that's sending to the tube, um, or how much current that's sending to the tube, etc. So again, I'm not going to go into a ton of that, but I've done a power line test on my machine, and so I can pay attention. Now I know on my machine, 19 milliamps is the tube max. That's about 65% uh, power. If I go to 70%, I'm going to be overdriving my tube. So um, I also know just by math, 7.6 milliamps, 40% of my tube max. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that our focus is, is proper, right? So, the, uh, the best way to do that is to do a ramp test. Again, I will post a video um, or a link in the comments below 
on a video on how you do your ramp test so that you make sure that your little focal gauge, this is how on my machine, this is what Ohmtech provides. This is a little uh, focal gauge. This happens to be 18 millimeters. Now I use, I make and sell these little um, focus gauges uh, and that allows me to set the uh, focus. So now that we wanna make sure that all of that is proper, we've got our wood in place and we are going to do a couple of things before we get started. First thing I'm gonna do is I am going to focus my wood here. So let me focus the camera as well. We're gonna move the laser head to a spot where I can focus easily and have enough uh, distance to do so. So I'm gonna use my handy dandy focus tool here. Let me move that over just a hair more. I'm gonna raise my bed until my focus tool comes in contact with that. So now I know I'm at 18. So that's good. My focus tool magnetically sticks in place, which is one of the features. And then I'm gonna also make sure that I secure my wood onto the bed. So I have these little clips as well. Uh, that I'll show you here. So here you can see my little clips. These are just uh, clips that again I make. Uh, you can get these on my Etsy shop. But I'm going to clip this down. We are going to be using air assist which blows pretty high pressure air on this wood and we don't want it to move around because that's just going to mess up uh, if the wood shifts and especially as we start cutting all these circles you start getting areas where you can lift up the wood. So we don't want our wood to shift in the middle of that. So I'm just going to put a couple of little pins down to hold the wood in place. So now we should be ready. We'll go ahead and start the job. Now that the cut is finished, we can pull this out and see what we got. So it actually looks like we hit a wood pocket there on the side, but that is what we have for that card. Okay, we finished this first test card, and what we can see here is that we only were able to cut out one square here, 20 millimeters a second at 35%. Now, I'm sure I could probably push this one out because uh, this was same speed, higher power, or maybe there's a glue pocket there and that's why that one didn't come out. But since we can see that um, basically we got no information uh, over here other than not enough speed or too high of a speed and not enough power to cut anything out here. So what we have on the screen now is a redone test card. So I have lowered the top speed to 20 millimeters a second the bottom speed is still 10, but now I've got some mid-range uh, speed values here, and the power range is the exact same. So now we can cut out that card, and then that should give us a little more information. Now one thing um, that I did want to bring up that I failed to mention before, way over here you can see the minimum speeds. You've got speed, power, I'm sorry, not minimum speed, but minimum power. So you've got speed, power max, and power min. Now the minimum power is used when, like I said before, when the laser has to, to slow down and change direction, it will use a minimum speed. Now in all of these test cards, my minimum speed meet, matches my maximum speed. What that can cause, and you may or may not be able to see that, is the little points here where it does have to stop and change direction, so the very points of the stars, you may get a little bit of overburn. Now, that is, again, something you can play with. You could make a complete test card um, that just changes your minimum speeds so that you don't have uh, that overburn. But in this case, we just want to keep them the same because otherwise, if I had min values, I could end up not cutting all the way through because as the laser slows down, I actually reduce power at that point, And then if it doesn't cut all the way through, well, that's another issue. So did want to bring that up really quick. Now that we're back from the laser, we've got all these test cards, but let's talk about how to read them. So I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit here, 
and uh, we're going to take a look at these individually and see what they have to say. Okay, for our first card here, as we uh, mentioned when we were looking at this in Lightburn, we can see that at 10 millimeters per second, uh, any speed or power is going to be fine. We're going to be able to cut these out. Now when we move over at 15 millimeters per second, 20% power is not quite enough. 25 or higher, we're going to be fine. So if I was set at cutting at 15 millimeters per second for whatever reason, 25 may not always work, so I might go with 30 just to be on the safe side. But what I can see here is at 20, I need to be at 35 at least to get this out. Now, there we go. You can see there, um, there was probably just a little tiny hang up at uh, 40, but I would expect if I can cut it at 20 and 35% power, there shouldn't be a reason that I couldn't get it at 40. And then, but beyond that, 25 millimeters per second or 30 millimeters per second, unless I increase past 40%, I'm not going to be cutting anything out. And I know uh, I just don't like to run my, my uh, machine past 40%. Every once in a while I may go up, uh, but, and I won't go into the, you know, you can shorten the life of your tube. Some people say that really doesn't matter because your tube should be expended anyway. Uh, one way or another, whether it lasts, you know, if I could, if I can cut it uh, 30 millimeters per second, but I got to go up to 50%, but it cuts that, down the amount of time, then I'm not running my tube as long. So you're going to get to do what you want to do with your machine. Now, so we've taken a look at that card. And then as you saw, I created the uh, new card in Lightroom. And we, instead of going from 10 to 30, we get, went from 10 to 20. So let's take a look at that card really quick. So looking at these speeds and power, now I'm getting a little more, uh, or maybe not more information, but I can see, again, 10 I'm fine, 12 and a half I'm fine, 15, 30%. So 15 and 30%, or maybe 35 just to be on the safe side. Uh, 17 and a half, I could easily do that going to be fine. But again, now at 20, unless I'm doing 20, 40, um, and again, this one, let's see, the 35, again, a little bit of a hang up, but let's take a look at the backside. And this is what we're trying to avoid. We don't want to be in a situation where I thought maybe I could do it, you know, here, but now I'm having to spend extra time with an X-Acto knife, cutting these things out. Um, if you're doing a lot of production or you know, there's no guarantee that you're going to get these out without uh, chipping things, uh, etc. So you don't want to do that. And again, we can see where, you know, a lot of people, they think that this is a goal. Well, this isn't a goal. This doesn't tell me anything other than I've used um, either too much power or I'm not going fast enough because I've cut anything out. I want to know those areas where I'm not quite there. Now, this particular card you look here, it says six millimeters. This is the same uh, thickness as the rest of these cards. So I made a file, uh, you can't see the edge there, but I made a file for six millimeters and then ran it on a three millimeter um, piece of wood and you can see it cut it all out. Now this one here is actually, uh, it's a little bit thinner than six millimeters. It's about five and a quarter, but uh, so this is really what this is. This file is intended for. So again, eight to twelve um, are my settings. Twenty to forty, and again, you can see I've got these these transitions between cut and not cut, and that's where I'm really getting my information. So that is your goal. You don't want to be where you only have one or two cut out down here, because that's just telling you, well, I'm either going too fast or my power is not enough. You don't want to be all the way cut out. It's these transitions that you have here. And remember that material makes a big difference. Just because it works on one doesn't mean it's going to work on another. So if we take a look at our, uh, let's see, if we take a look at this one, this was our first one that we started with, and then we change this. Now this is that kind of white uh, backsplash board. Um, it's almost like kind of a pressed wood or MDF-ish. If we look at this one, you can see that 
10, you know, 15 at 30 or 40 is as fast as I can go with this particular stuff here. Now, the last thing I'll point out on this card, as you can see, I've written here, it says 20 PSI. This was actually an air assist test. So I can take these two cards. This one was done the exact same way, but this was with either no air assist or a lower air assist. I didn't write anything on this one. So I'm assuming that's without air assist. When I put it up to 20 PSI, you can see I got a couple more uh, circles out there. So again, just different ways to use your cards. And of course, there are different types of files out there. This is done on acrylic, but it also has a little engraving uh, test down here at the bottom. So very good information. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two about test cards and now you know how to read them and some tips for creating them and uh, just exactly how much data and how useful that data is. So as usual, if you're enjoying what I'm doing here on the channel, I would ask that you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and hit the little bell notification so that you know what we're doing. And we're gonna be bouncing around, you know, some days it's a laser project, some days it's the 3D printing project, but uh, the most important thing and always is that we are learning something together. So thanks again, my friends, take care.